Welcome to the Walk Boldly with Jesus podcast. I am your host, Katherine Duggan. I created this podcast to inspire you to walk boldly in your Christian faith. Each weekday, I will talk about scripture and how these verses can relate to your everyday life. Spending time each day with the Word of God is a great way to fortify your faith. I'm so glad to have you along on this journey. Let's get started. The title of today's episode is, We Are Saved by God's Grace. The scripture verse is Ephesians chapter 2, verses 3 to 5. The corruption that was in us from birth was expressed through the deeds and desires of our self-life. We lived by whatever natural cravings and thoughts our minds dictated, living as rebellious children subject to God's wrath like everyone else. But God still loved us with such great love. He is so rich in compassion and mercy. Even when we were dead and doomed in our many sins, He united us into the very life of Christ and saved us by His wonderful grace. I love verses like this because when the Bible points out the things I'm doing wrong, I know that I'm not the only one doing them. If I were the only one, or if only a few of us lived by whatever natural cravings and thoughts our minds dictated, then God wouldn't have put it in the Bible. The verse starts by saying, The corruption that was in us from birth was expressed through the deeds and desires of our self-life. We were all born with original sin. Adam and Eve were born into a perfect world. There was no sin. There was only love. And they got to stroll through the garden at night with the Lord. Their heavenly father would come to visit them and talk with them. However, they were tricked by the serpent and ate the fruit from the tree of good and evil. I don't know if they were misled or just enticed. The devil was laying out a pretty good picture of how God was trying to control them by not letting them eat the fruit from that one tree. The serpent told them, They would be like God if they ate that fruit. Who wouldn't want to be like God, right? So they ate the fruit. The interesting thing is that they were already like God. God made us in his likeness and his image. They were already like God. However, once they ate that fruit, sin entered the world and it didn't want to leave. This is the corruption from birth that the verse is talking about. We are all born with original sin, and that is why Catholics believe you should be baptized as soon as you're born. Once you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, sin can't stay. It must leave. However, because we are human, our choices can allow sin to creep back in. The sin that creeps back into our lives is expressed through our deeds and desires of our self-life. When sin creeps back in, We tend to live for ourselves instead of God. I was listening to an encounter ministry talk yesterday, and the teacher talked about how she had a niece or a friend's child whom she spoke to often. When the girl was little, my teacher would say things like, How did you get to be so beautiful? Or, How did you get to be so nice? And the little girl would always say, That's just the way God made me. There is such an innocence in this response. However, once we get a bit older and the world corrupts our thinking and sin crowds our minds, then we forget that this is how God made us and that he made each one of us just as we are for a reason. Once we allow sin to creep back in with our deeds and desires, our thoughts get distorted. We start to hate who we are, what we look like, what we sound like, and everything else about us. I was at a women's conference once and the speaker said she asked everyone in the audience who hated their bodies to stand up and 90% of the women stood up. She didn't ask who would change something about their body if they could. She didn't ask who dislikes something about their body. She asked who hated their body and 90% of them stood up. This is the work of the enemy. We are not born hating our bodies. We are born with so much love. And then this broken world pollutes our mind and bodies. 
The line in the verse says, We lived by whatever natural cravings and thoughts our minds dictated, living as rebellious children, subject to God's wrath like everyone else. This pretty much sums up my struggle. I have so many cravings and thoughts in my life that seem to dictate my life. Some things seem like they are not really a big deal, but when we really examine them, we see that they are not good for us. Do you have any cravings that take your focus away from God? Do you have thoughts that take up all your focus and that you're thinking about all of the time? If you have ever had an addiction, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I am lucky in a sense because the addictions I have had have not been life-threatening like drugs or alcohol. I am lucky that my addictions have not affected my life in ways like losing my family or my job. However, that doesn't mean they weren't damaging. When I was addicted to TV, well, I still am, but now I'm able to manage it better. I would watch TV all day long. I wouldn't get anything done while my kids were at school, and I wouldn't do anything after they went to bed either. I would watch hours of TV a day. I can only imagine how different my life would be if I had spent that time growing closer to the Lord, growing my spiritual life, reading books to further my knowledge, or really anything else that would have been productive. The enemy kept me there sitting and watching TV because he knew what would happen if I had spent that time with the Lord. He knew how different my life would be if I weren't addicted to TV. Now let's look at the last part of this verse because I don't want to leave you today thinking all about what you may be doing wrong or could have been doing differently. That's not the point of today's episode. The point of the episode is to let you know that even though we have all sinned, even though we don't live perfect lives, we are saved by God's grace. The ending of this verse says, But God still loved us with such great love. He is so rich in compassion and mercy. Even when we were dead and doomed in our many sins, He united us to the life of Christ and saved us by His wonderful grace. It is so important that we all know this. No matter what we are struggling with, God loves us with such great love. All the reasons the enemy is telling you that God can't possibly love you are complete garbage. God still loves you with such a great love. There is nothing you can do to stop him from loving you. There is no losing that love. I know I say this a lot, and I'm going to keep saying it until every single one of you believes that God loves you just as you are. And there is nothing you can do to lose that love. It is yours forever. Whether you want it or not, whether you deserve it or not. God is so rich in compassion and mercy. He knows why you did what you did, and His mercy covers it, covers you. His mercy is enough to cover anything you have done. The last line is awesome too. Even when we were dead and doomed in our many sins, He united us into the very life of Christ and saved us by His wonderful grace. This means that even though God knows all we have done, even though we did some pretty terrible things, God united us with Christ and saved us by His grace. God's grace is enough for you and all your sins. Jesus' sacrifice was big enough to cover all your sins. God loves you with such a great love. He is full of compassion and mercy. That is what I want to leave you with today. God saved us by his wonderful grace. Dear Heavenly Father, please bless each person listening to this episode today. Lord, we love you so much. We don't want to be dead and doomed in our many sins. We want to be free of them. Please help us. We want to put you first and show you our love by our actions. Please help us. We want to be able to live by the Spirit and not by the flesh. Please help us. Help us to see where our sin is getting in the way of our relationship with you. 
and then give us the strength to change. We love you, Lord, and we ask all of this in accordance with your will and in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey to walk boldly with Jesus. I look forward to meeting you here again tomorrow. Remember, Jesus loves you just as you are, and so do I. May the grace and favor of our Lord Jesus Christ be upon you. Have a blessed day. Today's word from the Lord was received in April 2024 by a member of my Catholic Charismatic Prayer Group. If you have any questions about the prayer group, these words, or how to join us for a meeting, please email Catholic Charismatic Prayer Group at gmail.com. Today's word from the Lord is, You say, I have no more to give. I am tired. I don't know what I can do. I say, stop worrying. You don't have to do anything but trust in me. Lean on me. Realize it's me in you that gives you strength. Trust in me. I will give you what you need. Trust. Move forward in love. 